and Tottenham versus Arsenal. We'll take a look at the betting that we currently have at matchbook.com. So this is a tough one to price, I think, in general. Tottenham are 3.35 underdogs, Arsenal 2.28 favourites. The draw is available at 11 to 4 or 3.75 on the matchbook exchange. You can back both teams to score yes at 1.72, no's 2.28. And the Asian handicap line sees Tottenham get a quarter of a goal head start at 2.0. And the total is two and three quarters. So, Adrian, we'll go back to you on this one in terms of setting this game up for us. Um, mm. It's a very, very hard game to call, I find, anyway, because with to- this Tottenham Hotspur team, like even that Crystal Palace away game, first half, they were honestly brutal, I thought. And they end up winning the game 4 0. You kind of like that just shows you they still have that quality, even if they're not playing well. And this game is set up for a p- p- potential shock here with Tottenham at home. Yeah, I mean, I'm uncomfortable with the odds a little bit, but, but if you look, if you look with your eyes at both teams this season, Arsenal are considerably better than Tottenham. I mean, that that much is clear to see. You can see that with the points tally from, you know, every department that, of the team, Arsenal are stronger than Spurs. Uh, I think Harry Kane, I mean, I don't like combined 11s, but Harry Kane's probably the only one that gets in the Arsenal side based on form this season. So, Arsenal, I guess, are worthy favourites, but they have a shocking record at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. You know, were blown away last year in the match that mattered most. So I think it's a a tough test for them. You've got the Kane situation, uh, where he's got one goal away from Jimmy Greaves' record. It feels destiny that he might be scoring this one. Um, Every chance he'll get a penalty. I mean, the record is ridiculous. I think Spurs have had eight penalties in, in the last 15 derbies. There have been eight penalties in the last nine North London derbies as well. But Spurs have had you know, the bulk of them in, in recent times. Um, yeah, I think Arsenal might need to score two goals or more to, to win the game. Um, they're capable of it. They're capable of getting over 2.5 goals on their own, I think, Arsenal, in the game. If they, if they bring their A game, looking at Tottenham's defence, which has only kept two clean sheets at home all season against Everton and Wolves, two teams who can't score so or couldn't score in, in the case of Wolves. Um, yeah, they've got vulnerabilities. I absolutely think Arsenal are going to score in the game. They could get two, two or three for sure if they, if they play well. Um, but this is a derby. It's a tough one to call. I'm not going to back Arsenal. Um, I can't based on, on their form in this fixture in, in recent seasons. But I can can look at goals and and, and over two point five looks looks a strong pick. Just in the obviously it's the high scoring derby around, but but even this season, over the course of the season, sixty five percent of Arsenal's games have gone over two and a half. For Spurs, it's sixty one percent. So these are two teams that have been been involved in a lot of um, a lot of high scoring games, and I think this can follow suit. Yeah, Miguel, over to you on that one. And I guess what Adrian's talking about, the goals angle in Tottenham Arsenal is such a, a, a copy and paste every time they play. But it's true. Like, there's always goals in this game. Yeah, exactly. And that's almost amplified with these specific two Arsenal and Spurs teams, given how it does feel like their um, their specific approaches complement each other in terms of how, given the way Arsenal will obviously take the game to Spurs, Conte is will look to hit this Arsenal on the break. And it just feels, I mean, it's a classic kind of a styles make, not necessarily make fights, but make uh, high scoring games. Uh, we're all at again spiked by the history of the fixture where kind of the emotion of it takes over. Uh, and you can already see that in the way <laughs> there's not exactly much, um, much love lost between Conte and Arteta at the moment. Uh, and I mean, I, th- I think there's, a, there's a, an even greater edge to this game given that just from speaking to a few people, there's a bit of a sense that. Um, Spurs, some people at Spurs, and I, I suppose especially Conte, think that they should be they should be capable of doing what Arsenal are doing right now. Um, that Conte felt this season was a chance maybe for a proper title challenge, given the ructions of a World Cup, and that's maybe fed into some of the frustration. And of course, it would serve. Didn't he say Spurs recently, up. Miguel. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Didn't he say recently it'd be a miracle if we get top four? I mean, that's yeah. That's I mean, it's, it's, it's 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 always classic kind of uh, expectation management. From uh, he's he's a bit he's a bit uh, Jose Mourinho like in that way, Conte. Um, but I suppose, but then equally the other side of that is that he felt he, he maybe would have expected more from his team at this point that he's been. A bit, and if you look, I mean, because it does feel like sometimes that Arsenal have a thinner squad than Spurs, and there's even questions over whether the first eleven is necessarily as talented, although they're performing to a much better level now, and so many players have been revelations. 
but it, but it certainly it would serve um, it would both serve Conte's purposes and of course add a satisfaction if they could derail Arsenal's title challenge now. With that, of course, it's it's going to be conditioned by whatever happens on Saturday at Manchester United. Um, but yeah, everything it, it's it's one of those where because of all that, I wouldn't necessarily be that comfortable picking a winner here or results, but I'd be very comfortable pointing to the goals. So it feels like this is going to be a unanimous one. Yeah, over two and a half goals. Yeah, yeah 1.84 currently. And Mark, you're in full agreement. A quick one. I know, Mark, before I heard you speak that you try your best not to look at recent games, perhaps, um, as maybe like that, as, as relevant a stat as maybe there is out there. But with this Arsenal team, this is massive for them to go. Like They had a couple of injuries going to Spurs last year, but this year they're going with obviously a much better team. It'd be massive for them to get a victory here. Yeah, it'd be huge. Um, and, you know, as you see by the price, you know, they've been priced up a... 225, 230 to go to Spurs. You know, if you ask that, if you're offered that price at the start of the season, you just laugh them out the door. Um, there's absolutely no way Arsenal would have been that price back in August. I mean, a million miles from the truth because there were 50 to one shots to to have a, to win the title. Um, Spurs were, I think, around tens. Um, so these two teams are basically occupying completely different areas of the of the Premier League table to what we anticipated at the start of the season. We probably expected it to be the other way around, really. But um, it's a horrible old cliche, but you know, form does tend to go out the windows in these in these massive derby matches, and this is a fixture which tends to be uh, kind of go the way of the home side more often than not. And that would make me slightly nervous about backing Arsenal in some way here, even if everything is pointing to an Arsenal win. Um, Spurs are unbeaten in eight at home to Arsenal in the Premier League. They've won six of them. They failed to score just once in the last seventeen against the Gunners as well. And team news wise, you could be looking at a Tottenham team that could have Basuma, Bentancur, Kulusevski and or Richarlison available to them this weekend, which would be an enormous boost for them, particularly in the final third when they've missed the latter two enormously, and even Benton Gore and his balance in midfield too. So um, interested to see which Spurs side turn up in terms of the starting eleven. They need to start matches much quicker than they have done. They've not led at half-time in the last 13 games across all comps. They've conceded the first goal more often than not in most of those matches too, and they've conceded nine goals in the last four at home. But... You know, you know, it could go on, really. They've conceded twice or more in seven of the last eight in the Premier League. They've lost all four against the top five. They've won two of nine against the top 11. Everything is pointing to Arsenal here because they are topping the table. They are topping or very much close to it in every metric you look towards. Expected points, expected goals. The reality is they've lost just one game all season. But that price doesn't appeal to me because it is the North London derby. And um, I do expect a better Tottenham to the Tottenham we've seen in recent weeks. And I would expect them to be more on it from the off than they have been in recent weeks too. So, yeah, I'm just quite happy to take the emotion out of it and just support goals like the guys really because these matches do tend to be quite thrilling affairs. They do tend to be quite explosive affairs as well. Wouldn't be too surprised if there was an early red, for example, and things opened up because of it. But uh, seven of the last nine derbies have gone overs. Seven have seen both teams scoring as well. This season, the two teams have scored in 32 of their 35 collective Premier League games. Arsenal's trip to Man United was really good fun, actually, and I didn't anticipate it to be earlier in the season. And Spurs have seen overs in six of eight against the top half already this term, too. So, you know, everything is pointing towards a, a good, entertaining match. Hopefully, we'll get overs over the line, and hopefully, for your sakes, Arsenal don't lose. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, it, look, um, we haven't really talked about it, but the 12.30 game uh, on Saturday could really affect the way Arsenal approach this game. Over two and a half goals, 1.84. Full agreement with the guys, which is great. Uh, no decision for myself to do that. And again, the, all these selections will be up on Matchbook. 